Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that there are worse partnerships out there than RK Bro, but not many of them. Nick Khan strikes again. The man who's basically been hired by the WWE to make the company saleable is making waves in the wrestling world today, at least according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer. Meltzer claims that Khan has been having talks with executives at Bushiroad, the heads of New Japan Pro Wrestling, about an exclusive partnership. Now don't worry, this isn't a merger or an acquisition, yet. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. But rather a talent exchange. At least that's what the public reasoning appears to be. WWE has been saying for a while now that they're open for business, and rumors had come out recently that they want to shake this perception that it's WWE versus the world, which, let's be honest, is the perfect name for a huge crossover event, but I digress. The idea of this proposed exclusive partnership would be that the WWE could use New Japan as a dangling carrot when trying to attract international talents. Sounds like a cool idea, too. WWE has done this sort of thing in the past, and the idea that this would basically give the WWE dibs on blossoming talents before they're even recognized in the States. It's tantalizing, I admit, and I know there are diehards out there already getting giddy over the idea of Okada or Jay White in a WWE ring. So let me crush that dream for a sec, hold on. Remember who we're dealing with here. I know it's doom and gloom to make WWE sound like the big bad evil corporation, but the WWE is a big bad evil corporation. Never forget what they did to the territories, or how they tried to sabotage WCW Starcade, or how they reinvented what it means to be an independent contractor, or when they fired Don Marie while she was pregnant or laid off hundreds of people at the beginning of a global pandemic when every other company on the planet opted not to, or lied about COVID testing to keep producing shows, or covered up the murder of Nancy Argentino, or many, 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 many other reasons and decisions. Ultimately, WWE wants two things in this world. They want all the money and all the power. And to both of those, some is not an option. Has to be all. I can tell you two reasons why the WWE would want to form a partnership with New Japan right now, and those reasons do not include a vehicle to acquire top Japanese talents or to offer a territory where they can develop their own. Those two reasons are all the money and all the power. First, all the money. As I said, Nick Khan's goal is to make WWE worth as much as humanly possible in order to get the best deal when they eventually sell to NBC, who are already paying nearly half a billion dollars a year just to air WWE programming. And along with Mexico, Japan is a big wrestling hotbed where WWE is just not the number one brand, and arguably not number two or number three either. Imagine the value of a partnership that could lead to ownership, the assets, the talent, hell, New Japan World and their tape library. But as WWE learned from Black Saturday, buying a whole promotion does not make an existing fan base immediately become yours. What a partnership does do though, is let investors both current and future see that WWE is expanding, that their influence truly is global and all without the growing pains of trying to build NXT Japan and them having to compete with, well, New Japan. The second reason, of course, is all the power. Now, this isn't a scenario where WWE wants a seat at the table and they want to plan out King of the Super Juniors, so don't worry about that. This isn't about who gets access to New Japan as much as it's about who loses access to New Japan. Right now, there are almost a dozen promotions all over the world that have talent partnerships with New Japan Pro Wrestling. That includes All Elite, Impact, Major League Wrestling, and Ring of Honor just in the US. An exclusive partnership with New Japan means those talents now can't work for any of these companies. Kind of defeats the whole point of open for business working with anybody shtick, doesn't it? So not unlike anything WWE does seem to do these days, an agreement that would make New Japan their exclusive Japanese partner could have serious ramifications across the entire industry, but it's never gonna happen. A big reason New Japan works with so many of these American companies right now is because of their US expansion. They have a dojo in Los Angeles, a TV show, hell, they created a title belt for this. 
Partnering with WWE would effectively undo all of it, as it would make no sense to have them essentially competing against themselves. I have to believe those at the top of New Japan have a lot of pride and honor when it comes to their business dealings too. Once upon a time, Impact crossed them with a bad deal misusing their now largest drawing talent, and they went over a decade not only refusing to do business with Impact, but even going so far as to end their only American TV deal at the time because they wouldn't even consider reopening that partnership. It was only after a complete sweeping change to Impact's ownership and management that that door was reopened earlier this year. There's no chance in hell that they would simultaneously kill nearly a dozen partnerships to work with their collective competition, and at their own expense no less. This story from The Observer is exactly as described. A story. Talks aren't the same thing as putting pen to paper. You can be in talks with a company for quite a long time and never actually do business, and I'd be surprised if these negotiations don't just break down in the end. After all, WWE doesn't actually have anything New Japan wants. I'm not even sure New Japan would be okay with replacing WWE's NXT Japan initiative, because they know their value, and they're not a developmental program. But of course, this is all just my opinion, and I do want to know, what do you think about these talks between WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling? Do you think it could ultimately be bad for business like I do, or am I way off base? If the two sides did come together, who would you want WWE to send to Japan, and who would you like to see come back? Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, because I want you to be a part of the conversation too. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.